and ketone reactions. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the Tollens reagent using silver nitrate, sodium hydroxide, then ammonium hydroxide. I'm going to take the, that solution once I make it following the directions. I'm going to disperse it into five test tubes equally. And to the first test tube, I'm going to add benzaldehyde, second acetone, third, three pentanone, fourth formalin, and the last one acetaldehyde. Now remember, on a Tollens reagent, we're talking about it being an oxidation reaction. And we do know that aldehydes undergo oxidation in this reaction, and ketones do not. So we're looking for a silver mirror when we have a positive reaction. In fact, you can see me reflecting inside of this. You're not gonna make this much of a sample, and I'm not either. We're gonna put this in a medium test tube, but I wanted you to see that the Tollens reagent makes a beautiful silver mirror. Again, it's an oxidizing reaction. Only aldehydes will undergo this reaction, and ketones will not. So to make this easier to see, I actually doubled the recipe, and right now I have in here silver nitrate and my sodium hydroxide. I'm going to go ahead and mix this. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this. We have a dark precipitate going on in here. And then the directions say add just enough ammonium hydroxide till the precipitate goes away. So I'm going to add a couple of drops. Let's mix that, see if it goes away. Not yet, put in a couple more drops, about five drops there I'd say. Ooh. We've got a lot of the precipitate, notice how it's going to the bottom and then I, it's much more clear at the top. I'm going to go ahead and add about five more drops. So I don't want to put too much in there. And then I'm going to actually transfer by decanting. I'm going to transfer just the liquid. So I'm going to allow the solid to settle to the bottom. And then I'm going to use a transfer pipette. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in this so I have a little easier time to go ahead and put it in my test tubes. All right, I'm going to go ahead and transfer just the liquid, not the precipitate that remained on the bottom. And this is called decanting because I let the solid settle to the bottom and I'm only removing the liquid from the top. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and it looks like I have almost 10 mils. So I'm gonna put about a mil into each one of these. In fact, I'm using the transfer pipette I'm using actually has a milliliter mark on it. it makes it a little easier for me to go ahead and measure. And it looks like we did good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add a few more drops than the direction said. The directions say to add two to three, but I have notes for five, six, seven to add about seven drops. So I added my benzaldehyde to the first one. It has a beautiful aromatic odor, as we know benzaldehyde should. So I'm going to go ahead and mix that and then let that set. I'm going to go ahead and add acetone, three pentanone, formalin and acetaldehyde, and then they need to rest a bit and we'll see what happens with our results. So I'm gonna go ahead and let these set for a little bit so they can go ahead and process. But right off the bat, I saw a big, big difference on form formalin, which is a form of formaldehyde. Immediately when I put in the drops, it turned this dark color. And the same thing with acetaldehyde. These other three, we're gonna see what happens. All right, it's been about 10 minutes. I know it's kind of hard to see it, but there's actually a bit of a silver disc to the last two here. So the formalin and acetaldehyde did get a silver mirror. I know we have the gray in there, so it's a little hard to tell, but I'm letting you know it did have it. The other, two, the other three, this one is benzaldehyde. It should have reacted. It should have made a silver mirror because it is an aldehyde. Now these other two aren't aldehydes, so they shouldn't react, and let's take a look. So neither one of them reacted, so that's good. So I'm gonna put this one in some warm water. 
And if we put it in warm water, we're gonna see if it's gonna help it to actually react. So I'm gonna put it in some warm water here. I'm going to let it set for a couple minutes and I'll come back and we'll see if it does react or not. So it's been almost 10 minutes in the warm bath, nothing happened. So for our data, we're gonna to have to say that benzaldehyde had no reaction. Now, here's the thing, we know it's supposed to because it's aldehyde. So that means when you write your conclusion, you need to make sure that you include the fact that the benzaldehyde did not react, but it should have. For the addition reaction, we're gonna put five mils of sodium bisulfite inside of this flask. We're gonna let it cool for five minutes. While we're waiting for it to cool, I'm gonna go ahead and weigh the filter paper. And after it's all done, we're gonna be adding five mils of acetone to it. We're gonna get a precipitate and we're gonna filter it in the same way we did on our previous experiment. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that our balance is teared. Put on our filter paper. And we're gonna record the mass All right, so I had this in an ice bath for about five to seven minutes and it actually made some crystals. I guess that was pretty cold. I'm gonna go ahead and add the five mils of acetone to this and we're hoping for precipitate. So I need to mix this pretty good. It got a little colder than I think it expected. Let me mix this. And how do we know when a precipitate is formed? What are we looking for? Any bit of cloudiness. now. Let's take a look at this. I know I'm kind of using the test tube technique. But take a look at this. I'm actually forming a precipitate. See how it's cloudy? That means we have a precipitate. A new product was formed. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the aspirator. I'm going to get my precipitate out of here, collect it, and then we're going to weigh it and figure out how much we made. So we have some beautiful crystals here that are gonna let be on the filtration apparatus for a little bit longer so it dries out a little bit more. Um, to describe the product, it pretty much almost looks like white crystals, almost looks like ice. So the next time I see you, I'll be giving you the mass of this stuff. All right, here's our crystals, here's our weight. I did tear out the weight of the watch glass. So you are going to record 3.1140 is fine. And then don't forget to remove the weight of the filter paper to get the actual weight that you recovered. So we're looking at the reactions of enolate ions and we are going to use acetone, 2-propanone also known as isopropyl alcohol, 2-pentanone, 3-pentanone and formaldehyde in the form of formalin. I've already added the first part, which was the three milliliters of the 5% sodium hydroxide. I'll be adding the drops of each of these, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add the iodine. All right, it's, I've already added the five drops of each of these. Um, they go from left to right, acetone and the last one being formalin. I'm gonna be adding the potassium iodide to them, mixing them. And it does say that some of them might take a little bit more milliliters, so we'll go ahead and see what happens on that. All right, I'm adding iodine to the first one. I'm already seeing a precipitate there. Let's go ahead and mix this up. I see a yellow precipitate for the first one. Let me add a few drops to iodine here. This is the second one. This is the isopropyl alcohol or propanol. The color I do have a little bit of yellow in that one. This one is the 2-pentanone. I'm seeing a yellow precipitate in that one. This is the one that it said it might take a few more milliliters because we do know that this one definitely has a carbonyl compound in it. So I'm just gonna add quite a bit mix that up. The color of iodine is still there. We need the color of iodine to not be there. Hmm. We actually have no precipitate in this one. Is that a little bit more? I'm seeing the yellow. Remember it said it could take 
about a few mils. Let's hope I didn't add too much there. Might have added a little too much there, went a little beyond what I needed to. Iodine is definitely there. Well, that's actually iodine. I think I went too far, so we're going to call that a no reaction. We saw that one step at which it was a no reaction. I accidentally added too much. The rest of these needed about five drops, I would say. This one is formalin, formaldehyde. Let's go ahead and get that to mix really well. Um, the color of iodine's gone. I do not see any precipitate. I want to double check by making sure I've added enough because it does have a carbonyl group, but it looks like this one is not going to react. So we're looking for a yellow precipitate. So our results are acetone did give us a yellow precipitate. Let's bring that a little closer. That is not closer. There we go. Our first one, acetone, did give us a yellow precipitate. The second one, isopropyl, did. It does not have a carbonyl compound, so we need to take note of that. Our third one, which is 2-pentanone, did give us a yellow precipitate. Remember, I added too much iodine to this to check it, but at that one point, we saw it had no reaction. So we're going to call this no reaction and also our last one, no reaction. So that's how you're going to record your data. It's time for the aldol condensation. I've already added one mil of 5% sodium hydroxide to my beaker. I'm going to be adding the three mils of the 18% to the beaker. And then I'm going to shake it. I'm going to notice the odor and then boil it for three minutes and then we'll be back. So after adding both components, there's no precipitate. Let's go ahead and heat it up. So I did take notice of the odor. It has a very faint, I would say almost almond odor to it. So we're gonna go ahead and heat this up and we'll see what happens. All right, it's been three minutes. Definitely have a yellow precipitate. Let me whack this and see if we have a pungent odor. So it does have a stronger odor and I would say it is not as pleasant as the almond. And the idea behind the word pungent means it's not as desirable of an odor. So go ahead and say a, I would say a medium pungent odor. It wasn't real harsh and it wasn't mild. The almond though at the very beginning was a very mild background almond scent.